Okay, I might have a slight tripod head problem. But seriously, the tripod head is one of the unsung heroes of photography gear. As a landscape and macro photographer, who also happens to be a gear nerd, I've learned that the right head can make or break my shots. I've tested tripod heads in the toughest conditions the Pacific Northwest offers, so you don't have to. Whether you're a landscape photographer battling the elements or a macro enthusiast chasing tiny details, I'll help you find the perfect tripod head for your needs. We'll break down the key criteria, consider real world shooting scenarios and rank the heads based on their performance. And do stick around until the end because I'll reveal a unique accessory that can make any tripod head even better. As you know, not all tripod heads are created equal. Some are fiddly, hard to level, and slow to operate. I don't have enough fingers to count the number of times I saw an amazing scene and by the time I got my composition, the light had disappeared. As much as I love testing gear, when I'm out shooting, I want that gear to disappear so I can focus on composition and getting the shot. Now that I've figured out which tripod heads work best, instead of fumbling with knobs and struggling with unstable setups, I can get my camera positioned just right within seconds. For today's tripod head lineup, we'll focus on the head specifically designed for landscape and macro, but we'll skip over dedicated macro rails, bulky wildlife gimbals, and video heads not ideal for hiking up Pacific Northwest trails. In this video, I'll rank tripod heads based on key criteria, ease and speed, precision, build quality, stability, portability. Durability, one-handed operation, performance for panoramas, performance for macro photography, build quality influences both durability and stability. A well-built head provides a more stable platform for your camera. However, even a well-built head can require maintenance to withstand harsh elements, like salt water. And while a solid build contributes to stability, the design of the head itself plays a significant role. While price is a critical factor in any gear decision, it isn't a factor in the rankings, but we'll discuss it as we go. While more expensive models do often equal better build quality and nicer features, companies like Arca Swiss and Really Right Stuff have significant brand premiums. We'll compare models with similar features at different price points so you find the right balance of features and value for your needs. So as we walk through the heads, consider which features matter most to you. All right, let's kick things off with the OG of tripod heads, the ball head. Known for its simplicity, speed, and all direction movement, it's often the go-to for beginners and pros alike. There are literally hundreds of options, so we'll keep things high level. The ball head's greatest strength, its ability to move freely in all directions, can also be a drawback. An all too common scenario is that you have the framing that you want from top to bottom, but your horizon level is off. So you unlock the ball head to adjust, but when you do, you lose the top to bottom framing that you have. Now, there's still plenty of reasons to love a ball head, but is it right for you? The three ball heads we'll be looking at today are the Really Right Stuff BH30, the BH55, and the Acrotec GXP SS. Speed and ease of use are going to be pretty similar for these. The bigger the ball, the more control you're going to have. In addition, the Acrotec and Really Right Stuff have tension knobs. These dedicated knobs are really nice. Minimum tension that's applied to the ball to avoid that sort of droop that can sometimes happen. That said, they're ball heads and making fine tune adjustments with any ball head is pretty limited. The build quality of these are all excellent. 
but the Acrotech stands above with the best clamp lever in the business. Has this really nice confirmation click. Durability of ball heads is going to be pretty high all around, but the open ball design of the Acrotech GXPSS makes it durable over the long haul, even when exposed to the elements. Yes, elements can get in, but they can also be washed off really easily. If you compare that to the more standard ball that is sort of encapsulated, a lot of gunk can get stuck in there, and these are really hard to take apart. The BH30 has a 15 pound load, the 55 a 50 pound load, and the Acrotech a 35 pound load. Nothing beats the BH30 for portability. It's very small and light. The 55 is two pounds. And the Acrotech is very good considering its strength to weight ratio. When it comes to panos, being able to level above the ball is important. And none of these have that functionality built in, but the Acrotech does have the ability to flip over. By flipping the clamp, we now have our panning above the ball which is much better for panoramas. With macro, making fine tune adjustments is critical and ball heads lack that ability. What if you could keep that smooth movement while adding panning on top? Let's flip things upside down and explore the world of inverted ball heads. The inverted ball head we'll be reviewing is the Arca Swiss Monoball P0. Just like the other ball heads, it's quick and easy to use. Some people feel this upside down orientation gives them more control, and I tend to agree. While the precision is slightly better than the other ball heads, you still can't make fine tuned controls. The build quality, like most Arca Swiss products, is good. Similar to the other ball heads, the durability will be good as well. Load capacity is 44 pounds, which is pretty great considering the size and weight. If you consider that this thing is just a little bit bigger than the BH30, it has almost three times the load capacity. And the lack of a large knob means that it has excellent portability. The lack of a knob to loosen the ball in favor of a ring gives this ball head better performance when using it one-handed. One of the standout features of this head is the fact that the panning clamp is above the ball. So it's better than the other ball heads when it comes to panos. Just like the other ball heads, it's average for macro. Ball heads offer speed and fluidity, but what if you crave even more precision? Get ready to dive into the world of geared heads where precision is the name of the game. The most common type of geared head that you will see on the market comes from one of the oldest types of tripod heads, the three-way pan and tilt. They have since become mostly relics because they lack the precision of these newer geared versions. Geared heads may not be as smooth as ball heads, but they do offer a level of amazing control that some photographers prefer. The Manfrotto 405 and 410 Enro GD3 W and this KNF Concept GD3 W are popular options, each with their slightly different take on the three way design. When I was getting into real estate photography, I picked up the Manfrotto 405, but it is obnoxiously large and heavy. Manfrotto then created the smaller 410, which seemed better for landscape photographers, but it wasn't Arca Swiss compatible and it also suffers from serious durability issues. I owned two of them and they both broke. These newer entries like the Benro and the k &F don't seem to suffer from those same durability issues. We'll review the k &F Concept 3-Way. This is very similar to the Benro and an update to the Manfrotto 410. One of the big advantages of these types of heads is you don't have to worry about the flop like you do with ball heads because the gears are always engaged. Speed and ease of use of gear heads in general is going to be a little bit lower than ball heads. 
the open movements of some geared heads like this one do allow you to acquire a general composition fairly quick. Landing down in a location, putting your tripod down, and then I would immediately orient towards my subject and then open these up to get generally in the area and then use the fine tuning to uh, refine the composition. But still compared to a ball head, it's slower to use. Precision of all geared heads is going to be good to excellent and the tolerance of this geared head is very good. What's really nice is all of the markings indicating the degree of rotation in any given plane. And one of the things I love most about these types of geared heads is the ability to make larger, more open movements. So by holding the orange and twisting it, we can then turn it here. We're sort of disengaging the gears. The build quality of this surprised me. After starting with the Manfrotto 410, I sort of expected this to be cheaply made, especially for the price point. The machining and materials feel high quality, so the build quality is actually pretty good. Durability of all geared heads will depend highly on the elements that it's exposed to. Because the knobs stick out quite a bit, these heads tend to take a beating when they're on the side of your backpack or in luggage. So I'd rate durability just okay. Stability at around 13 pounds isn't great. Now, while it's not the heaviest head, it isn't the lightest either. And it's knobs sticking out in every direction means it's more likely to get caught on snags as you're walking through nature and more likely to get beat up along the way. So portability isn't great. Assuming you have this head positioned with the gears facing you, using it one-handed with your other hand on the camera is a pleasure. There's no panning clamp on top. For dedicated pano shooters, I'd recommend something else. Macro is great on this. The range of motion on this is surprisingly good. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share. It means a lot. A lightweight geared head with a hand crank system. The Sunway Photo GH Pro 2 Plus, which is a crank style head. Here's a head that's gained a bit of a cult following among some landscape photographers. After it arrived, I felt immediately limited by the lack of open and large movement controls, making it really hard to acquire a composition in a speedy fashion. It uses a crank system, which makes it a little bit faster, but it's awkward, so I ended up returning it. Because there's no open movements, only geared ones, speed is just average. Like all geared heads, precision is excellent. While my model didn't break for the short time I had it, the build quality is about average. However, durability has been poor with numerous reviews indicating problems. Load capacity is under 10 pounds, which is dangerously low and probably contributes to some of the issues people are having. Now this is actually one of the lightest geared heads with that said, it's still over one and a half pounds, so I'd rate it as average. There are no open movements, only geared and crank movements, which move the gears a little bit faster. So it is fun to use one-handed. The Plus version added a geared panning clamp on the top, which is something lacking in the three-way heads that we saw earlier, which makes it better for panos. And while it can't get into extreme angles like some of the other heads, due to the knobs hitting into one another, I still found it good for macro.
Three-way and crank style geared heads offer classic versatility, but what if we could pack that functionality into a smaller, more elegant package? Enter the cube head, a marvel of minimalist design. The Arca Swiss cube, the most expensive head on our list. Because of the sizable financial investment, I haven't added one to my toolkit, but I did have a decent play around with one at the store and got to try out all of its features. Speed and ease of use is higher than normal because you can access the controls from any side. Once you get used to it, it's quick to set up considering it's a geared head. The cube style geared head is known for its unparalleled precision, especially favored by architectural photographers. Precision is phenomenal. What sets it apart is that you can adjust pitch and roll of the camera from literally all sides of the head. Now, despite that build quality, durability is still going to be average, especially exposed to elements like salt water. This design in particular exposes the gears whenever it is not directly level. Boasting the highest load capacity of the heads we're reviewing at 88 pounds, it's very stable. But with that stability means that it's not that portable at almost two and a half pounds. This head is exceptionally good one-handed, especially because you can use it from any side. It has a panning clamp on top, which makes it great for panos. And it's pretty good for macro too. Cube heads are fantastic for precision, but what if you need to make quick sweeping adjustments? Hefty and precise like the Cube, but with free movements in addition to the geared ones. The Arca Swiss D4 and newer entries like the Leo Photo G4 are both great options with this unique free movement system. When I was shooting real estate, I picked up the D4 and ended up using it quite a bit for landscapes too. The free movement of pitch and roll is the standout feature that for me makes it better for field work than the Cube. A combination of open movements when using these teardrop shaped knobs and micro adjustments using the round knobs. In this version, there's both a pan below and above. The one above is also geared. Brands like Leo Photo and Sunway Photo have produced versions of this type of head at a significantly less price. Let's see how they compare. Because these have both open and micro adjustments, once you get used to them, they're fairly quick to use. Precision is excellent on both. The D4 is an absolute tank. It feels extremely solid and well-made, but the Leo Photo isn't far behind. The durability of any geared head when exposed to the elements isn't going to be excellent. But the design of this style of geared head means that the gears are less exposed less often. And so in my experience with using the D4 to shoot waterfalls and seascapes, it held up much better than I expected it to. The load capacity for the D4 is 66 pounds while the G4 is 44 pounds, both excellent. The Sunway photo version of this I believe is something like 11 pounds, which is one of the reasons why I've never picked it up. Now the D4 isn't quite as heavy as the Cube, but it's not far behind. Taking it on long hikes was out of the question. It was also very expensive, so I ended up selling it. The Leo Photo G4 isn't the lightest, but it is lighter compared to the D4. With the positioning of the knobs, you typically need both hands if you want to make large open movements and not just geared ones. Because both have a panning clamp on top, in this case, both of them have a geared panning clamp, they're both good for panos. The fine tunability and the angles that you can create using all of the knobs make them great for macro.
Geared heads are known for their precision, but maybe you love the fluidity of a ball head too. Can you have both? This is where things get interesting, the hybrid head. On to the Arca Swiss P0 Hybrid, a combination of an inverted ball plus gears. That combination pays off when it comes to the ability to acquire a composition in a quick fashion. And like all geared heads, it's very precise. It combines the fluidity of a ball head, in this case, an inverted ball head, with the precision of geared movements. You can use the ball to get in the ball park of your composition, tighten that down, and then adjust and fine tune using these knobs here. The build quality is very good. Maybe not as good as the Cube in D4, but it's not far behind. Now durability is limited by the design itself, not the build quality, and the gears are exposed to the elements, especially when not level. This can lead to rusting out of the gears as I've experienced firsthand. After having purchased the P0 hybrid and taking it down to the beach, the internal mechanics were exposed to quite a bit of sea spray, and you cannot take this thing apart easily. So I ended up needing to send it out because all of the movements became stiff and it was a couple hundred dollar mistake. So now I don't take geared heads that I'm not willing to ruin down to the shore. Load capacity is rated at 44 pounds, which is very good. Now this is actually the lightest geared head on the list at 1.3 pounds and the width is fairly narrow, but it is tall and still heavier than ball heads. This is my favorite tripod head to use one-handed. The combination of the ring for the ball plus the gears mean that it's quick and easy to use even one-handed. The inverted ball with the panning on top means that it's great for panos. And like most geared heads, it's good for macro. You can't get to the same level of tilt as you can with some of the other geared heads, but it's good nonetheless when you combine it with the ball. Another way to get things level might be even easier than a geared head. Let's explore leveling bases and how they can simplify your workflow. Leveling bases come in a few different forms. Some that fit right into the apex of the tripod where all the legs come together are going to be the best options. Uh, others can be put on top of the tripod base. And so that's slightly less stable, but it can still work. With even just a simple ball head, we can pan along a level platform. Now combining a leveling base with a pan and tilt two-way head is a nice combo favored by landscape photographers who value a level horizon above all else. The two-way pan and tilt from Sunway Photo really needs to be used with a leveling base in order to control all three axes. Let's see if this two-piece system is worth the extra complexity. Ease of use is about average. Some people like the two-step process of leveling the tripod and then being able to focus on controlling the other two axes. So I'd rate it as just average. Precision on this is poor to average. In practice, I've found that leveling the tripod using a leveling base can actually take quite a bit of time. One of the reasons I picked up the Sunway Photo instead of a more expensive head like an Acrotech is because of the inherent strength of this type of design. It's a very minimal head, so it's fairly easy to make a decent build quality, even for less expensive models. There's less parts to corrode, and while I haven't owned mine for very long, it seemed to hold up pretty good. Again, the design of this head itself leads to a nice load capacity of 33 pounds. The head itself is less than a pound, making it pretty light, but you do need to combine it with a leveling base. 
So altogether, it's just about average. You can use either knob to control the tension, but you almost always need two hands to get the leveling base set up correctly. Having a leveling base plus a pan both below and above makes this a great setup for panos. This is a pretty poor setup for macro where leveling isn't important and being able to control the left and right tilt is. We've covered a lot of great options, but if panoramas are your passion, there's one more head you absolutely need to know about. In all fairness, this really is a specialty head. And I said I wouldn't rate specialty heads, but when I was really into panos at one point, I have tried to use this for non-pano landscape photography. And if you were going on a longer hike and were mostly interested in photographing panos, and the occasional non-pano, you might be wondering how this stacks up. But while it can be used in a pinch for other types of landscape and macro photography, it really is something that I generally tend to bring alongside my other head. Now, the newer ones have a, a built-in leveling base here. So if you only shoot panoramas, then that could be a nice feature to bring this down closer to the apex of the tripod. Speed is poor to very poor as it takes time to set up. Once it's set up, it's not terrible. There are angle markings on all of the knobs, but it's still pretty imprecise. The build quality is excellent. The build quality and design make for a great durability. Now the low capacity is just about nine pounds, which is pretty light, especially given the fact that your camera is dangling and there's multiple clamps involved. But considering how lightweight it is, I'd still rate it as average. It's pretty portable, although you need to collapse it down into a carry case. When it's up on your tripod, it's over seven inches tall. This is a compact head. I have owned the full-size pano kit from Really Right Stuff and would only recommend that if you are hiking very short distances or photographing nearby the car. But this setup is pretty light and you can take it alongside your default head. Altogether, it's 1.6 pounds, including the nodal rail, and it all packs away nicely in a case. This would not be easy to use one-handed, nor would you really want or need to. Obviously this is meant for panos, so it's excellent for panos. Due to the unwieldy nature and low stability, this would be a pretty bad setup for macro. So that's it, we've made it through all of the heads and here's the final ranking. Now for a bonus round. This isn't a tripod head, but it's an accessory that can make a huge difference. Telephoto shooters have been spoiled with a secret accessory built right into many of the long lenses that they use, and that is the rotating collar mount. The primary purpose of this collar is to better distribute the weight of the heavy lens over top of the tripod, but many of them also rotate, which means that moving from horizontal to vertical position is easy. And over the years, third-party rotatable lens collars like the Silence Atoll and the Small Rig and the newer plates have come on the market and offer a similar way to switch orientations for the rest of your lens lineup. Let's see how they perform. The first is the uh, newer CA058. It is simple and light. So let's get it on the camera and show you how it works. 
and switching from horizontal to vertical is as simple as that. One thing I don't like about this is that it can't be used on top of L brackets. That's where the next option comes in. This is the small rig rotatable lens mount. They make models for most popular cameras. It's a little bit more complex, slightly more heavy. But what I do like about this is that it goes on the bottom of your camera L bracket. And the reason why that's important for me is because I like to attach additional adapters on the sides or bottoms of my L bracket. In this case, a cotton carrier hub so that I can carry my camera on my chest. You might have a peak design clip so that you can attach it to your backpack. You simply take this piece off and with your lens disconnected, screw that on and then lock it into place. From here, it's just a matter of clicking this in. And then you wanna lock that in place. And now you can reattach your lens. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach my 100 to 400, which already has a rotating collar mount on it. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because one of the great features is that this works even with this lens, at least this particular lens, I can still access the native rotatability that is built into the 100 to 400. But if I swap this lens over, to something like a 24 to 120, I still have that ability to rotate. The newer model that we just showed does not work. The component that attaches to the tripod head is a little bit higher and they make contact. We're in the weeds here, but the configuration will depend heavily on your lens and camera and color that comes with that lens. With all of our tripod heads rated and ranked in general, I wanna give some specific recommendations to help you choose the right head for you. All right, we've got our overall rankings, but as you know, the best tripod head is gonna to be totally dependent on your unique style and needs. So let's dive into some specific scenarios. First up is the general jack of all trades, versatile landscape artist. You're gonna want a tripod head that adapts quickly to different shooting scenarios and shooting styles. So top picks are the Arca Swiss P0 Hybrid and the Leo Photo G4 Pro. Both offer excellent ability to hone in on a composition fairly quickly and refine it. And the value pick is gonna be the KNF Concept 3-Way, which offers a lot of bang for the buck. Next up is the detail-oriented macro enthusiast who prioritizes exceptional precision and stability for macro photography, especially in challenging conditions. This person needs a tripod head that allows for very minute adjustments, works at extreme angles. My top pick is the Leo Photo G4, which is a much more affordable option with similar features to the D4. The ability to hone in on very specific angles. The ability to pan both below and above is also useful for macro for fine tuning the composition. And again, the KNF Concept 3-Way is a great value at $180 or $190. It offers a lot of the same capabilities. Next up is the adventurous backpacker who prioritizes lightweight, compact gear for hiking and backpacking. Portability, Durability from the elements and stability at extreme angles with the tripod, all those things are gonna be important. My top pick is the Arca Swiss Monoball P0, just, just slightly heavier, but with the panning on top offers some additional capabilities. And if you even wanna go lighter, an alternative is the Really Right Stuff BH30. And lastly, the Resilient Seascaper, who prioritizes durability and resistance to harsh elements like salt water and sand above all else. They want a tripod head that's easy to clean and maintain. And so top pick is going to be the Acrotec GXP SS because of its open ball design. Now, if you are committed to using a geared head because you've just switched over and enjoy the way that that helps you set up compositions, then I'd recommend, again, the KNF Concept 3-Way. It will degrade over time with exposure to salt water, but being a more budget option, it's less expensive to replace. Which tripod heads do I tend to use? 
These days I've been gravitating towards the Leo Photo G4. I love the ability to have the open large movements and to be able to do them at the same time. So by opening up both of these big levers, you sort of have the fluidity of a ball head and then you can individually or together lock both of those and fine tune using the knobs. You have panning below and panning above. But one thing I did swap out was that the G4 Pro, uh, which does come with a geared panning clamp, it doesn't have the ability to do open movement. So it's just a geared pan. And there is actually most times I want to make more of a sweeping movement. By opening up this knob right here, I can shift around in large movements and then you can lock that off and then use the geared knob, just like you have the large movements here, which you lock off and then have geared. I also enjoy having that in the panning clamp. In order to get that, this is the Sunway Photo GC01G. This is actually the clamp that comes with the GH Pro Plus and the GH Pro 2 Plus. And the reason why I have the Leo Photo version versus the Arca Swiss version is because I believe this offers almost maybe 80, 90% of the build quality as the Arca Swiss, but it's a third of the price. And the reason why I didn't go with the Sunway Photo, the GH Pro Plus, is because the load capacity is significantly different. This G4 has a load capacity of something like 44 pounds, and the Sunway Photo GH Pro Plus is something like 11 pounds. It is four times the load capacity. I'm not sure if that's a typo because you would imagine they'd be fairly similar, but that's what's listed on the website. When I'm not using this head, I usually gravitate towards the Arca Swiss P0 Hybrid. I love the streamlined design, the inverted ball for getting close to the ballpark of the composition even quicker than this. Uh, and then still having the ability to fine tune. There is no geared panning, but it does have panning. And if macro is on the menu, then I will also uh, attach the small rig rotatable lens collar so that I can quickly shift from horizontal to vertical. When it comes to shooting seascapes, Geared heads aren't really the best. They tend to rust pretty quickly. So I leave these at home when I'm doing seascapes. And what I like to take is the Acrotec GXPSS because of its open design, the ability to clean it really quickly afterwards and bring it back to full working condition. Earlier, I mentioned how having a good tripod head and setup enables us to do our best work. But unless you know where to go and when to be there, even the most amazing gear won't help you capture those magical moments. If you haven't seen my video on five apps for epic landscape photography, be sure to check it out. It's full of practical tips and tricks to make sure you're in the right place at the right time for your next adventure. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time.